Bucharest, the local chapter of the Startup Grind ecosystem that is the largest uh, gathering of online entrepreneurs in the world with over 2 million active uh, entrepreneurs on our uh, platforms and over 600 chapters uh, around the world, each of these chapter uh, holding at least one event each year. Uh, each month where they invite one of the most interesting and innovative uh, startups in their local ecosystems and also uh, connect them with investors and to a large audience of a person interested in the entrepreneurship phenomena. Uh, today, uh, we are part of the uh, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Month, meaning that in October, Startup Grind uh, around the world is celebrating uh, this inclusion and everything, all the benefits of diversity in uh, and around entrepreneurship. Uh, our global sponsors are Silicon Valley Bank and CMS. Uh, we thank them for their involvement and support towards uh, our entrepreneurs. Today we have a special invite. Uh, his name is Bogdan Termure. Hello, Bogdan. Hello, Bog Dan. Hi. Bogdan is uh, co-founder uh, along uh, Aura Termure of Hayo. Hayo is the first crowdsourcing platform for instant delivery here in Romania. And they have a very interesting story. Um, between 2020 and 2017, uh, Bogdan worked in UK in one of the leading players there in instant in delivery, instant deliveries. He beneficiated a one uh, of a startup diaspora award here in Romania, and uh, came back in Romania with all his uh, expertise after a tech exit there uh, of his company. Came back in Romania. Uh, to develop furthermore this uh, really very interesting and very, uh, let's say, up-to-date uh, business that really expanded uh, during uh, the pandemic years. Uh, so Bogdan and Aura won this uh, great award, the Startup Grant, uh, the Startup Diaspora Award, uh, which is a program by led by the Romanian government. And this is one of the, let's say, more, most successful example of uh, startups that came back uh, in Romania from abroad and developed because last year, uh, Hayo has a revenue of almost 1 million euro and already profit of uh, somewhere around 15%, which is quite, quite amazing uh, for a startup that only benefited of a, a grant, which was somewhere around, I think, uh, under 50,000 euro, if I'm not uh, mistaken. But you had just such an explosion and you really scaled up really fast. And without uh, very, let's say, intense um, outside financing, which is, I think this is really amazing. It is a really good example for many of the startups uh, here that you you don't need only to rely on the investment to grow. So uh, congratulations for that, Bogdan. And uh, I'm really looking forward uh, to see uh, what's Hayo about. Uh, if I understand, you also received, uh, let's say, uh, standard from Food Panda that uh, you are one of the most compliant uh, flea now in instant delivery. Uh, you are also between the main players in Romania, and if I'm not mistaken, I will say it not to you. So let's say the blame is on me. You are leader in the region of Moldova on uh, instant delivery. So welcome for being uh, with us today. So I'm really looking forward to, to this event. And uh, there are a lot of person interested to see your uh, your story and uh, how you arrived here. So before we start, just let me know. Uh, okay, it was the incentive of the startup diaspora and so on, but why did you, I mean, uh, came back? Because it's not, let's say, so big a grant now, it's under 50, so wh why you decided to come back? And also, I will go a little bit uh, after that, but think about it, how it is to have your wife as co-founder in your business. But let's start with the first. Why you came back? Oh, uh, thank you for inviting me first. And uh, it's very interesting to, to be part of this kind of events. Uh, why we come back? Oh. We wanted to come back, you know, because uh, all the time you think at home and we had two small kids and we think, um, it's better to grow here than to grow in 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 in, in UK, um, and uh, 
I think startup diaspora just pushed us. You know, if if we had an idea with that kind with that kind of investment, we said, okay, this is a sign. Let's go back to Romania. Let's try to 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 do the same thing there because at that time we would we wouldn't think we will ever deliver with bicycle in Romania because no one was using bicycle to deliver at that time. But we 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 came here and the, it was very a rough start to say like that, but slowly, slowly we increased. And the second question, how is to to have? A- I think it's also related. That's why I ask uh, why you came yeah. beyond, you know, uh, this opportunity, this business opportunity. Uh, you know, sometimes we think we live more with the business than we have the family, because most of the time we talk almost all everything uh, all the time about the business, but. Um, um, it is very good because it helps me to control it and it's the best advisor that I can have it in in, in, in my business. And I can say no when she say I'm I'm wrong with something, you know. So <laughs> uh, maybe you can do it with someone else, but though you can do it with your wife. <laughs> Yeah, we had a, we also had a lot of discussion with investors on this topic. If they should invest in a company that has a co-founder, a husband and wife, and uh, let's say one of their argument after talking and interviewing a lot of uh, startups that had this kind of uh, you know structure in the ownership, was that actually you have to co-founder committed uh, 24/7 on the on the business. And uh, if you can deal with that inside, it might be actually a successful, you know, uh, uh, ownership model of a of a business. So, uh, so congratulations uh, for that. Uh, and I think also for uh, for the bootstrapping part, it's also helpful to be aligned both of you uh, in this business. But also, I'm also thinking about being a husband and wife in the same business. Uh, if I would think as an investor, for me, it's uh, somehow, uh, I will say it's really a comfort because I know that you don't have other solution and you have to give everything you have into the business. Because if the business fails, actually you both uh, both fail. And uh, I mean, it's one way road and uh, congratulations for this. It's highly risked, but also I think it's a kind of commitment that some investors would uh, uh, actually do appreciate. You are all in into this business. Exactly. So, yeah. So from that, really, really congratulations. Uh, if you have something on this to uh, to add? What, what can I add? You know, uh, in... First, before we are husband and wife, we are a great team. You know, we we have skills that are complementary. I'm uh, I'm a dyslexic. You know, I have very hard time for doing some tasks, and my wife helps me a lot on this side. And um, I think taking apart that the 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 thing is, we are husband and wife. We are the best team. And I think this helps us to to grow. Even if we have an argument, let's say for some family argument or something like that, when we are at work, we just deliver everything. And um, I think this helps us to to grow and to reach new highs and uh, to reach our uh, our goals. Yeah, I think this actually this is amazing. And uh, I think for this part of uh, actually something that might be uh, quite common in this region and it's important to see uh, all this aspect and consider also other business models than let's say in US and everything. So uh, congrats on that and uh, hopefully you will continue this uh, scaling up uh, uh, pass that actually is really amazing. You are a little bit atypical, I would say. Uh, then the other startups, you are a husband and wife uh, founders. You grow to and reached uh, almost 1 million, if not 1 million euro revenues with uh, so little uh, in outside investment. So without, uh, you know, diluting your shares into the, the company is really a very interesting uh, uh, business model. And I think we need more and more examples uh, of your kind. Now, coming back to the business, uh, so Hio is the first crowdsourcing platform for instant delivering. 
Now, of course, during the pandemic, we've all seen the explosion of everything related to delivery, instant delivery. Uh, but uh, now, why do you consider that uh, instant delivery caught the attention of, of the media, uh, of the business realm, especially of the investors? Why now? Why was that so really interesting about that? Um, I learned this thing, and I think in, uh, just before we left UK, um, it was Amazon that started to do for uh, for a revolutionary thing that they were guaranteeing two hours delivery for uh, any product that it's uh, going into a small box, you know? and we were part of that. So we helped to when they started this uh, in UK, and from that we realized um, it's the old model is not working anymore. So it's very hard for everyone to hire people and to to to, to hire couriers and buy cars and everything. So uh, instant delivery service started to become uh, much more common in a variety of industry. Um, even customers have become uh, accustomed to, to instant delivery service and the most uh, companies start to offer this kind. But um, uh, when you start this kind of, of delivery service, uh, it, it becomes very expensive for the companies. So this started to be a very unique system for certain companies. So if you don't have uh, some great, uh, a lot of investment to start the delivery service, uh, you will fail, and instead of trying to be better on what you're doing, you just focus a lot on the most consuming and the most expensive part of uh, a, a logistics chain. So, yeah. uh, why is important? I think this uh, gives one of the best customer service for the customers, you know, because yeah. especially the pandemic started now to Oh, to with the restriction and everything, uh, pushed customers to 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 take this cost, this kind of services. So uh, delivering to a customer an order within a few hours from their request, it, it can make a difference. Not all the companies can manage to uphold that level, and customer often consider delivery within an hour of anything that they can order to, to be a height of the customer satisfaction. So we are <clears throat> we already saw these um, changes in the behaviors of companies. We are in talks right now with one of the biggest chain of shopping sectors in Romania. So they can bring, they want to bring a shopping center closer to their customer because they know they lose a battle with the online shopping. So um, they realized they have products in, on their shelves, but the customer still ordering online. Why? Because it's easier and uh, it's uh, they don't need to go to the uh, to the shopping center to to find to look for the parking and to to go in the traffic and especially now with the COVID restriction, uh, it's even harder to to go to the shopping center. So we already talk with shopping center to bring the shopping center to 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 the customer. So this is one of the why the instant delivery service is important because everyone needs this kind of service in one way or the other. Yeah, and actually, yeah, it's amazing how uh, some things can change uh, an entire uh, the habits, the buying habits of a uh, of a person, especially during the pandemic. But now, I was thinking about you know when you see that you have instant delivery in one or two hours, some sometimes as a as a buyer as a client, you tend to take it for granted and. Uh, uh, I don't know until until we'll have all these uh, flying drones that will come with your package. Actually, how it works? What's behind these two hours? That uh, uh, what happens then? What's all the 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 mechanism? That's maybe sometimes it, it just might seem simple for a, an outsider. But uh, how how it works? How does instant delivery works, uh, Bogdan? So uh, instant delivery is 
almost like any so, uh, shipping service, but uh, it's made much faster, uh, you know. Uh, one of the examples that started this kind of the, 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 the delivery is, like I said, Amazon. And they start to uh, impose the rhythm for this. So if they show it, it's possible, everyone wants it. So um, other companies started to invest heavily in this kind of uh, last mile delivery. See, and um, imagine in two years ago, three years ago, we had two hours delivery for some products. And yeah. now there are companies that they are trying to push uh, 15 minutes delivery for grocery. Oh. Oh. So this is a big, big pressure on any company, any restaurant or any small business that tries to to serve their customers. And especially with the COVID restriction, you know, um, a lot of companies, a lot of restaurants that we work to get with them, um, they survived because of us because they didn't have almost no clients in, in, in inside. So all the, the deliveries, all the orders was for delivery, most of them. So if they know, they, they were, should, should be closed. So uh, in this time, the customers, uh, in this current age, the customers have companies and apps uh, around them that they give quick access to what they want. Uh, let's say the customers want uh, the food delivered in 30 minutes. In this way, companies have formed an environment for customers where the quick and efficient response now is an expectation. And um, if a company thinks to uh, live up to the expectation, customer can move to the next company. So uh, it, it, it's like, you know, I think the customer pushed this industry more and more because they can choose where to go and they can choose uh, where where to, to buy. Uh, and every company tries to be faster, cheaper and more reliable. Yeah, I mean, uh, especially during the pandemic, I think uh, instantly you just uh, faced an uh, enormous uh, you know, request from the market to provide all this uh, logistics that's behind the uh, instant delivery. I was just wondering how you dealt with this uh, amazing, you know, uh, need from the market. Uh, uh, I mean, I think it could have been so, so easy to fail, to do something wrong, but yet you, you've you been uh, able to, sometimes having a huge, you know, demand from the market, okay, it's good, but when it's really big, you, you need to really adapt and come with the right solution, with the right management, and especially you are dealing a lot with people. How you you done this? How you successfully raised this, uh, this amount of uh, people that you manage, that you, uh, all the logistics that's behind it. Uh, we, we we failed a lot to say. Ah. So we learned a lot from our fails, and we learn a lot to to make everything simple. And we use tools. We use to digital tools to to care, to uh, manage all the. We had almost thousands of CVs sometimes or application or from the from the people and we were supposed to sort them very fast and to to push for um, people that they are passing our our standards and we just take them on the road as fast as we can but in the same time the ones that they were supposed they wanted to go it was supposed to close everything so um, we have days when we were hiring 20 people and in the same time we were closing 15 people. So oh. uh, I don't think we could possibly do this a few years ago, let's say 10, 15 years ago, because at this time we have digital tools that they that together um, helps us to to make us more efficient uh, and um, to push all the the all the the tools that we need push us to to reach all the the, the customers all the um, the people that apply so at any moment from my uh, we are a team of six 
people that are managing everything. So at any moment, we all have information and we know exactly how many people they apply. And this is because we, we use and we develop some back tools that helps us. And, um, you know, a lot of uh, companies, they invest a lot in, in, in e-commerce and, and things like this. And um, we, we came in front of them with our tool and we connect we can connect with them very fast so we offer them um, access to our crowd uh, sourcing fleet um, they can do it instantly with an app or they can just use our app or our appy so they can reconnect to directly to their um, to their website or their platform so they don't need to use humans to, to, to input their deliveries or things like this. Oh, this is amazing. You really are the intersection of, uh, you know, uh, human working and new technology, which I think it's uh, is quite amazing. Uh, now, after two years, when you it seems that you find, you know, the right the right solution and the right ratio between these two, which one do you think it's more important uh, for the future and which resource technology or human it's uh, scarcer for you to find? Uh, in order to for the business to grow, uh, I think it's both. You know, because we were already, you know, uh, there was an article two days ago that uh, one of the big players started to do some tests with uh, some uh, robots in Brasov. Yeah. We already done this last year in Cruz, yeah. but we didn't do to make too much buzz. You know why? Because it's very hard for. Uh, for this kind of uh, robots to deliver their product, because you can do it on the, on the uh, a small area, but um, you know, Romanian people they are still looking for the experience, you know, and okay. if they need to come to the robot to pick up their food, uh, it's the same almost like they go to the to the restaurant and pick up their food, so. I think we still have, we still need people, but with the um, uh, with the technology and with the innovation, we can make them work together and to to bring and to to create a better experience for everyone. Uh, for example, at this moment, we are using the technology and using our platform. We started to pick and to go in one area that no platform is using at this moment and um, um, we we attract fleet that um, in when we are in peak time they are in lower time so we can use them in the the time that uh, we are um, we are the most needed for the fleet but uh, they they don't have too much to do Okay, so uh, actually, if I would, uh, if you will have to talk with the public opinion, even if you are a technology company, it doesn't mean that uh, robots will take the uh, the jobs of people. You still need the people to deliver for all the logistic. From your estimation, what is your need of uh, new jobs that uh, you estimate that you will create in the next uh, years if you've done this? Uh, uh, these forecasts? Uh, for now, we already need today, I think we need about 150 more uh, delivery uh, couriers that we, we, yeah. we needed. But um, in the next year, we, we hope to reach our goals to be to have a, our own fleet of about 400 people. And in the same time, because of our platform, we try to bring on the same table uh other companies like us that they have smaller or bigger fleets and to work together to to fulfill practically the need that is at this moment because uh there is a big issue and i don't think i can call it an issue the customer is the issue you know because it has too many choices there are yeah. so many um platforms at this moment there are so many uh, restaurants that they can where they can order and um, we don't have enough drivers for all, all of them so uh, on our uh, 
idea is and our innovation is to bring all the, the careers that they are available at this moment and to be available for anyone and uh, like this it will be uh, easier for any restaurant even a small restaurant that they don't have the money to invest in a, in a delivery system or an apps or to buy cars or to to hire uh, couriers they can use just a platform like us and we can uh, fulfill the, their needs and i want to say something because i think a lot of people they will think we are um like um competition for big platforms like food panda global and us uh, in fact we are their backbone because yeah. They are not using, they, they are not hiring people. They are using companies like us. And this is what we started. Uh, and we, we notice we have big needs in one company. And um, when, let's say, a company, uh, one of the platforms makes a better marketing or they have a problem with the, with the, with their app, their orders, they grow or they, they go slower. But we have drivers blocked on that platform because customer, if they want to order, they will still want to order and they will shift to another platform. So we, we don't have the possibility to move them. With our platform, we will, we will fulfill this goal and it will be a bit easier for us. Oh, I mean, this uh, it's really interesting and I uh, wanted to find out a little bit more about this shift. Uh, from, you know, providing uh, delivery, having all the logistic behind and towards the shift toward becoming, you know, the a technology platform and integrates uh, other companies that somehow might have been your competitors. How you deal with this, uh, I don't know how to call it, cooperation between competitors? How are the other players uh, viewing your, uh, your move and the services that uh, you want to provide them through this technology platform? Uh, that's a very good question. We already talk. We are in a discussion with one of them to integrate with them, because they realized um, the power is with who has the deliveries, the the couriers, you know, because um, exactly like Uber started to 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 make this kind of uh, a shared economy. Uh, I think it's time for last mile delivery, so instant delivery, to, to, to become Uberized as well, you know. Um, so they don't have an issue at this moment. In fact, I think in um, Norway, they already work with a platform similar to us because they know um, the, the more you grow, it's harder for them to bring the couriers. And in fact, the number of um, of deliveries per day are almost the same, but it depends of what the customer choose as a platform or a restaurant. So we can we can reach the same amount of uh, orders, but someday you'll have one of the pink or one of the yellow one will have more or less, you know? really interesting this shift and uh, what are your provisions about what you think will be your forecast uh, now if you shift and you put uh, let's say more emphasis on the technology platform uh, what are the markets that you intend to enter in, in the next uh, couple of, of years how you intend to scale your business and where uh, we will start with the food because food is one of the biggest vertical that is and we already know it and let's say we 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 have a big experience in this but um, on our app and if anyone can download it, it they already see we are already testing different kind of instant deliveries practically we will bring on the same table um People that they have uh, vans or people that they have recovery cars or we can bring even um, um, moving companies or uh, I even had a, uh, a discussion with uh, some veterinary cabinets. Um, in, 
in our city, in Yash, there are a lot of veterinary cabinets that they build outside of the cities. But the issue that they have, most of the clients are inside of the city. So they started some companies, uh, some independent uh, entrepreneurs to deliver pets, you know, and they don't have a tool for that. And they, it, it's very hard even for cabinets and even for uh, these uh, people that they deliver the pets uh, to connect them. So one of the, the discussion was to see if we are compliant with everything and there is no laws about this. And we can even add this kind of stuff so veterinary can bring their customers to them. So um, they, if you start to think you can find almost anything to deliver, especially uh, I think food, uh, gifts, flowers or groceries, it's almost dated now. Uh, they started now to be stranger and stranger things to deliver and uh, you start to, to see uh, a lot of different things that you never thought you you'll need to deliver. Really, really interesting uh, scaling up scenarios, not only regional, but also different verticals. Uh, actually, this one I didn't expect it with small pets, but uh, it might just be the next big thing. Who knows? Really interesting about that. When you are talking about scaling up, when we are talking also um, what uh, startup needs to scale up, they need uh, also expertise. They need uh, people that can uh, open them doors. They need, uh, you know, people with great insight into the industry, into logistic fulfillment. Uh, I've just seen an interesting uh, announcement, a post on LinkedIn uh, from one of the most renowned entrepreneurs and investor in Romania, and I would say also Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, it, it is uh, Marius Gena, and I was just uh, wondering how you succeed uh, to onboard him into Hyo. What's the story behind it? Because with this uh, this entrepreneur, you really uh, have a lot of insight on everything related to fulfillment and uh, this kind of business. So how you've done it? Um, I, I'll start from the beginning. We met at, you know, it was 10 years or 10, 15 years ago, it was Arena Laylor. Me and my actual wife, we've been there, you know, and uh, you've been uh, then you were married or uh, yeah, we yeah. weren't married that time. We were just dating. We're engaged. dating. Oh, okay. We have this business. Let's do this. And we've nice. been there and we already took an investment at that time, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it failed, you know, when you are young, you just you think everything and uh, what failed. At, but from that day, uh, we already have the contact for, with him, and um, um, we kn we know and we realize he is one of the um, the most important uh, entrepreneurs from from Romania and the most successful. And we are humbled and honored to to have the have him in uh, in our team. And uh, I think uh, with his uh, advisory and um, even his help, we will reach to, to the new heights and uh, we will reach our goals. So we started from Arena Leilor and we hope we will, we, we, we talk with him and we talked to him until we took the lion at home. <laughs> Oh, I mean, this uh, really is amazing. You told me about uh, the first uh, actually startup that you had that they invested in Sorana Lelo failed. And you also told me that you grew through failures. So what are the lessons that, uh, you know, uh, uh, you can, uh, I don't know, share with the other with the other startups? And also, what's your mindset related to failure? Because it's really interesting how you, you use it to, to grow. What would you recommend to the other entrepreneurs that maybe have this fear of failing? Uh, if I, I learn something, I learned really interesting thing. Um, winners never quit and quitters never win. You know, it, it, it is very easy to, to, to just say I quit and that's it. But it's it's a bit harder to, to, to try again, try again. But I think the results are 
are overachieving what you what you lose. So the most important thing is just to try and try and in fact you, you never lose anything because you learn something from everything. We even today we, we had a new uh, situation that even after two and a half years when we're doing almost the same thing, it, it was new for us and we learned something from it. So every day become better on what you're doing and if you love it because uh, I finished the law school and I'm the, how my wife says, the expert burger delivery right now. So if you like it, just learn it and do it and redo it as much as you as you need. So in the end, you'll, you'll be good, you know. That's uh, that's actually clear. Now I'd like to take you into a time traveling exercise with me, if you if you agree, and uh, if you will uh, be able to come back now, ten years ago, when you said that you had this uh, first pitch at the Arena Leilor, what would be the lesson that you will uh, share with uh, you uh, and Aura ten years ago? Oh, that's a, a pretty hard one. <laughs> So, um, to get more knowledge, to make more research, uh, I think this is the most important thing, the, the, the information, to get as much information that you can find and try to find the expertise in the industry. Because, you know, we were young at that time and uh, even if it wasn't, um, it wasn't Maris Gene that invested in our company yeah. with a different uh, uh, line that started. But, um, you know, we didn't have the expertise. We we thought something, we tried, but, you know, I think we, we reached the same thing. We just quit at one time. And that's, I think that was the, the reason that we failed, because we quit. We didn't try it and learn from our mistakes. We just said it, it, it's not it's not working, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, really, really interesting. Now the other way, let's say that okay, let's think about uh, you in five years, you and Aura, uh, both hopefully millionaires uh, already. Let's say in the uh, chairman of uh, Hio, not so involved or maybe involved in the, in the executive part of the business. Uh, what do you think it will be like in five years after all this, uh, uh, all this effort, uh, all this uh, excitement? How how would you feel? What do you think you will accomplish in five years from now? Um, I will start doing something new. Oh. I don't think I will stop. You know, it, it, uh, I, we had this talk, and we already, you know. We are already in a, in a process of due diligence to to be crowdfunded now, and um, uh, we, we already need to talk about this kind of stuff. And um, we were saying, okay, let's say we sell, we exit in five years. Uh, what are we gonna do? I will start something new for sure, and I think I'll go almost in the same industry. I think, or I don't know. I, I can say it, but I will not stop. I'll just do something else. Well, actually, this is interesting that you will do something. Uh, a lot of uh, successful entrepreneurs uh, actually also started new ventures, or even if we are looking, for example, to Marius Gena, uh, also converted into a successful investor and is now leading one of the top uh, top VCs in Central and Eastern Europe, catalyst that not only invest in Romanian companies, but also throughout the region. If you will have now 1 million euro to invest into a startup that's now on the market, who would you invest in? 1 million? Yeah. I think first choice right now, we need a million. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, um, you need to look at the gig economy. I think this is the the for the next five to ten years is the next thing for for, for this. Uh, this is the 
the most return that you get. Uh, I think the gig economy, you get the most return at this time. So, um, and it needs to be something that you like it because at the end of the day, if you don't like it, uh, that is what I am. And uh, if I were to invest, I would be something with deliveries, and I think. There will still be something with deliveries because at this moment we live on the delivery side. So I didn't think because I need to make that first million, then I would invest it. But now I have a, a, a team that I need to think about it. What will I do with the exit money, right? This is great. So uh, now a company that already one million revenue on profit, and I understood that now you are looking for the first uh, actually investment through a, a crowdfunding platform. Hopefully soon we'll uh, find out more about uh, uh, about this, and I'm really really excited about this uh, this news right now. Uh, tell me a little bit more. You also uh, you said something really interesting earlier that uh, from your les the lesson that you learned you you, you would advise uh, you in the early days uh, to be more rigorous on the studying on to its uh, surveys on gathering uh, uh, information on the business to to work maybe a little bit more on the numbers on the markets analysis and so on uh, what do you think are the roles of uh, let's say programs that educate startups in entrepreneurship uh, in general. Do you think, uh, did you find some interesting frameworks uh, that use it? Do you recommend to other uh, startups to participate in what you think about it? It is a good way to start or maybe, you know, as you did, just start, fail and then uh, just go and find yourself the need to be, to document more and so on. Uh, as we are already part of Innovix and now we are part of the Grinders and I think it was one of the most comprehensive program that we 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 took part. Uh, in UK, I, I've been, um, I took part into a um, Prince, uh, Prince of Wales uh, program similar to this, it called Princess Trust and um, it was almost, you know, it, it was a, a basic one. And at the beginning, when we thought about Innovis, we said, oh, it's something similar with that one. But it was very intense, more, uh, very comprehensive, and we had access to, you know, industry leaders. And I think the most and the, 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 the part that we took it the most from, from us is the networking, you know we had access to people that they have information because at this in this day you need to know to have information and to have access to information so they are one of the best thing that it happened to us because like i said we were supposed to start the crowdfunding in july august but because of the innovix we just delayed it but we are happy to do that because we learn more and what we learn in 12 weeks i think it it was really an acceleration for us you know because we were used to do our things like sticks and stones like we said it we started with sticks and stone but right now we we are very very higher than than we, than we started so this kind of programs helps a lot helps you to see exactly. And, you know, I think uh, you get traction from the others a lot. Yeah. Because you see, you see the others, how they started and how they um, uh, interact and you will start to interact. Because we are a company that we don't even have a marketing guy, you know, because we don't need most of the, the clients. They just come directly to us. But we realized we need a marketing guy now especially with the app yeah. we were we are not used to communicate so much we are not used to 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 interact we just do our job and that's it and um yeah the the this program the innovix program helped us a lot and we we are very grateful for for, for that uh, program and we are happy to 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 to, to achieve this 
Yeah, I think it's really amazing there's such program like the you know, VIX VCR accelerator or even Arena Layer Law exists. Uh, we need more of such uh, programs to encourage uh, startups to grow. And uh, I think it's uh, it's amazing that uh, successful entrepreneurs such as Mario Kena uh, are leading the way also in this area, educate uh, startups, invest in startups. Uh, I think it's a good uh, time for a startup to to be here in the region. Uh, how you dealt uh, with the online? Because you told me about networking and somehow, you know, if you are, we are thinking about networking like it was two years ago, you, you were thinking about, you know, going to, I don't know, a cocktail a meeting uh, to try to interact with people. How it works now in uh, into the, let's say, more online realm? It is working, is it? Uh, how you manage to get most of uh, what uh, such programs are offering you, how you've done it? Mm, you know, people learn to adapt, especially entrepreneurs, I think, learn to adapt faster than the others. If you don't learn to adapt, uh, you just fail. And uh, if you come into this kind of program and you will see everything is online, we'll just go for it. Um, we were some kind of used with this and we we try to integrate any kind of tool that helps us to to to, to make it easier and faster because we uh, use this kind of online meetings a lot we have in six cities and uh, we, we are in six cities present and um, we couldn't be every day in every city so um we were using this kind of uh, online meetings a lot and um for us wasn't a big issue but uh, i think everyone after two years of lockdown it was some kind of used for to to do online meetings um and yeah it was very good interesting for that uh tell me about uh but I'm certainly you have uh, which entrepreneur you do, do you really like and uh, uh, you really admire and why is that? Uh, it needs to be uh, Romanian or whatever. Um, I think I think everyone likes Elon Musk, right? I think everyone wants to be like him. At least a part of one of his companies, no? yeah. yeah. I, I think Elon Musk, you know, uh, started humble, and uh, everyone thought he was crazy when uh, he said he will do electric cars, right? And now yeah. everyone wants a car like that. And um, when he started SpaceX, everyone thought he's crazy to do. Like, he will do this kind of uh, space for for everyone and you know he applied the basic things and everything in the, the cars everyone thought at very complicated things and he just thought he just took some batteries from laptop connect them more and more and he made an electric car of course it's a little bit more complicated than that but he thought he 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 made it on the simple way and the SpaceX uh, is the same. And they just started with, they said, okay, we need to make it cheaper first to be affordable. And they tried, they tried. I was, you know, uh, when I was uh, sewing this kind of rockets, they were just destroying like this. And it was, yeah, I was thinking of when he will reach to the, uh, the usable rockets, he'll be the greatest. And I think he's one of the greatest. This is really, really great. Uh, and because you said about Romania, what you think would be your uh, one of the models here in Romania as an entrepreneur? As you know, as you think, one of the the most. Uh, we even kept contact when we we've been in UK. With first at my heart is Maris Gena, and I think then it's. Um, Felix Petrascanu from Fan Korea. Yeah. Uh, this is the the two that I oh uh, another lion, uh, Mr. Anastasiu from yeah. uh, 
Another very important uh, uh, business uh, and entrepreneur from, from, from Romania. So uh, this is the most, the three, the most that I, I like the most and I admire them and uh, I try to, to to copy them, to say like that. Now I think that uh, there are a lot of uh, really talents from a lot of uh, young men from Romania just uh, living abroad, maybe studying and after that having a living there. Uh, and uh, I think your example is really important for them to show that you can have success uh, uh, even when you return back from uh, such a developed ecosystem like UK and uh, uh, like another. What, uh, what would you recommend to them? How you would encourage, but also I would like for you to be realistic, what to expect uh, when coming in Romania? Is it easy? You are, of course, you are now you are a, a success story. You benefited a, of a program of some uh, really important connections that actually you built uh, with uh, this top entrepreneur that you just mentioned. Uh, do you think it's worth coming back now in Romania? It is a good time. Are there opportunities? It is hard. What would you recommend to them? I think in Romania we have great opportunities at this moment. Uh, there are even more than UK. I can say it like that. Because, you know, when it's an evolving country, it, it, it's easier to, to find new needs and new ways to do things, you know. But if you want to come back, you need to expect to be pretty to be hard. bulletproof. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, it, it, it is, you need to do hundreds of papers for something that in UK, let's say you do only one paper or you don't even do it, you know. You need to be prepared to to have um, mental stability to... to uh, this is a good one. To... <laughs> to uh, take everything on board, you know, from the start when you open the company until any contact with any government institution or things like this or any anything, you need at least five or ten papers, you know. And this, it, it doesn't help you a lot when you are just came to, from outside of the, from uh, another evolved country. But in here, it'll be very hard for them to accommodate. I was, a few times I said I'll go back, you know, I just quit and go back. But, you know, my wife just said it, okay, you come back, I started again and that's it. <laughs> well, yeah, really amazing. And now I really understand uh, who's the, let's say, the, the rocket in the company. <laughs> she is my rock. <laughs> yeah, really amazing. So congratulations, uh, congratulations on that. Uh, and yes, I do. I do believe that uh, there are a lot of also. I do believe there are a lot of opportunities here in the Romania and also in our country. Uh, I really love when uh, people like you come with all the knowledge, expertise, as experience uh, that you you had in other developed uh, economies and countries and bring all this knowledge back here. Uh, the fact that you benefited of the Startup Diaspora grant, I think is it was uh, the spark, as you said, for uh, for you. And it's really amazing how it, uh, it developed into this uh, really successful now company that you are. Uh, I understand then uh, that uh, in two days you will uh, be participating in the demo day at uh, our partners in Ovix BCR. I'm really, you know, wish you the best of luck to there. You worked really hard and you have an, uh, an amazing team. Even if only six, you really achieved uh, amazing results until now. And uh, uh, I'm really wish you all the good luck, uh, luck into the uh, fundraising that you are now uh, to truly start to to do. Uh, again, thank you for being uh, with us, uh, Bogdan. Thank you to all our partners that have been uh, today with us, Silicon Valley Bank, uh, CMS, Toplow, 
uh, company in the world and uh, Innovix BCR. Uh, it's really amazing when all these corporations uh, come and uh, uh, somehow fuel this startups ecosystem. We need more startups uh, like you that can face uh, risk and uh, do not quit uh, from the first time and just go on and on. And uh, we would love to, to have uh, your expertise shared with um, uh, with the other startups. On this note, I will also like uh, to invite your wife, uh, Aura Termure, to participate in another uh, in another episode of Startup Grind. Again, I do believe that there is a great potential between uh, entrepreneurs uh, from women, and uh, the, the women need more examples, uh, successful examples uh, of entrepreneurs that just when started. Um, you know businesses and uh, uh, this is an, offic uh, an official invitation we are looking forward to that and we are looking forward to share with uh, our community uh, hopefully interesting results in the next uh, day and uh, scaling up plans that you intend to implement after this uh, these investments. Uh, because we are uh, coming to an um, end now, we are into the diversity, equity, and inclusion months here at uh, Startup Grind. Again, I do would like to emphasize the, the values of Startup Grind and the benefits that any company can get from being uh, inclusive and uh, diverse. Uh, it's really important to have uh, different skills, different knowledge to come with different uh, ideas into a company. Now I'd like to give you the, the final uh, minute if you would like to, to give some advice to the, the community, the startups that are looking at us. Uh, so please, this is, uh, this yeah. is your chance. <clears throat> First of it, uh, thank you very much for for this and uh, for this event, and uh, thank you for everything what you're doing for uh, uh, what the startup grind is doing for the startups, the Innovix, and um, all the the programs that helps startups. You know, um, I think uh, a lot of people can uh, can rely on you, so they can get it easier over the the hiccups that they can find or, or along the way because you know in one way we all the grinders we are a team and we work together we, we have contacts with each other and we help with whatever we can do it you know because we already are in with two of them to help us with some oh this is really amazing to, to, to use some of their tools uh, mm. to prove our, our business you know um, so first, uh, this kind of uh, networking and this kind of um, uh, programs helps us a lot to, to achieve and to to reach our goals. And as advice for everyone, is just do not give up. You know, you just try it and try it and try it, and and every time do it better than you done it before. And I think this uh, in the end it will work. You know. Yeah, really great. So thank you again, Bogdan, for being with us. Thank you again. Uh, yeah. Next time with Aura and with your other co-founder, I understand that you are minority there. <laughs> okay, <Yeah>. so <laughs> really want to uh, to see also the majority on uh, on our startup grind. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for watching us. Uh, and see you to the, our next event uh, tomorrow, uh, when we'll talk with uh, another interesting startup from the Innovix PCR cohort now coming from Singapore. Thank you very much and see you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.